like a lot of you, I work from home. So this right here is my desk. This is where I work. This is where I do my nine to five. But this is also where I play games, where I edit photos, where I watch YouTube videos, where I call my family. So this desk has to serve two purposes for me. It has to be my workspace, my office at home, but it also has to be where I can do what I want with my computer. So let's dive into each of the components that make up my workspace and why I think they're so good and why they meet my needs. First, a little disclaimer, I'm going to be focusing not on products and not on brands. Instead, I'm going to be focusing on features and concepts that help make this desk space work really well for me. Obviously, desk setups are very subjective. What works for you may not work for me and vice versa. If you have a heavy focus on gaming, but I have a heavy focus on programming, we're not going to have the same needs. So it's going to be subjective. I just want to show you what works really well for me. So first things first, let's start with the desk, what everything is built on. This is an extra wide desktop. Um, most sit-stand desks are 40 to 50 to 60 inches wide. This one has a desktop that is 70.5 inches wide. And I just really value having a lot of desk space, being able to put down papers or put down something I'm working with. Um, putting a, a laptop on the side or putting a tablet on the side. I just like having a lot of desk real estate to work with. And this is a sit-stand desk. I use the presets on the side to raise and lower the desk to my ideal sitting height and my ideal standing height. I don't stand too much at the desk, but when I do want to stand, it's really nice to have that option. Going back to me valuing desk space, I don't have any of my monitors on their built-in monitor stands. Instead, all three of my monitors are mounted and the mounts just attached to the edge of the desk. Even my laptop is on a laptop mount that is off of the desk, so that way I have space underneath the laptop to put things if I need to. So let's move on to the heart of my setup, my primary monitor right here front and center. It's a 32-inch 4K monitor. Uh, it is only 60 hertz, so it's not great for gaming, but my primary use case is work, and I'm a software engineer by trade, so I program most of the day, and having a big 4K screen is awesome for programming. I can put programs side by side, I can put up a lot of code, there's just a lot that I can fit on this screen, and I love that. Another feature about this monitor that works particularly well for my needs is that it is a fairly color accurate monitor, which is good when I edit videos or when I edit photos. On the side of my primary monitor, I have two identical 21 inch 4K monitors. So yet again, they're 4K. And the reason I have all of my monitors are 4K is so that I don't have to do weird resolution scaling per monitor. I love having at least one monitor in portrait orientation. I've got two, which is double as good in my opinion. Um, as a programmer, especially as a web programmer, it's very helpful to have a web browser in the top half and then the dev console in the bottom half. One thing that is common about all three of my monitors besides them being 4K is that they all have USB ports in the back of them. And in the case of my side monitors, they have USB-C ports in the back of them. In the back of my primary monitor, I have a USB hub hooked up and all of my peripherals that I switch between my computers are hooked up to that hub. So my keyboard, my mouse, my stream deck, my camera, everything is plugged into this primary monitor. And the reason I do that is because I don't use a KVM. So a lot of people that have multi-computer setups use a KVM switch. Um, and I think it's a very useful tool, but it I couldn't find a KVM switch that met my needs. So first off, KVM switches tend to be fairly expensive. On the low end, if you want something that supports a triple monitor setup like I have, you're looking at at least $100. And on the expensive end, I've seen them go for six, $700. My secondary monitors do not have HDMI in or DisplayPort in. They only have USB-C in. And I haven't been able to find a KVM switch that does just USB-C out. I've seen a lot of KVM switches that do USB-C in, but none that do DisplayPort alternate mode over USB-C. If you know of any, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to try one out, but I just haven't been able to find one yet. So because I don't use a KVM switch, that means when I'm switching 
computers when I want my monitor and keyboard and mouse to go from my MacBook to my gaming computer, I actually have to physically unplug the plugs, plug them in below. It's a nuisance for sure, but I think it's not that bad, especially because I only have one cable per monitor. So for my three monitors, I have three total cables, and that's all I switch from computer to computer. I'm not dealing with moving HDMI cables or DisplayPort cables or unplugging my keyboard and mouse and plugging them into the other computer. I just unplug my three monitors, plug them into the other computer, and I'm good to go. All right, now let's move on to my audio and video. I work from home, like I said, so I'm on video calls all the time, pretty much every day. And to me, it's important to have high quality video and high quality audio. This is the kind of video and audio quality you get out of a USB webcam. This is probably what you're using. This is what most people use. This is what my coworkers use. It gets the job done. It's not terrible. But, this is so much higher quality video, higher quality audio. It makes the experience better, not just for me, but for all of my coworkers as well. They can hear me better, they can see me better. It's just a better experience overall. This microphone is definitely overkill for 99.9% .9 of people that are working from home. Uh, if you don't have a podcast, you probably don't need this mic, and I don't have a podcast. This is a dynamic microphone, which means it's really good at picking up audio that's close to it, but not picking up audio that's far away from it. You probably haven't noticed right now, but my washing machine is actually running in the background. My microphone is on an extra large boom arm. Because I have a wide desk, I need an extra large boom arm. It allows me to get the mic positioned exactly where it needs to be when I'm using it, and I can just put it off on the side of the desk when I'm not using it, and it's completely out of the way. Similar to my mic being overkill, my camera is overkill, but this one actually makes a lot more sense. This is my Sony a6500. It's a mirrorless camera that I've had for years, and I use it for photography. I go out and take pictures with it, and when I'm not taking pictures with it, it used to just sit in my desk or in a closet. I figured I had it, so I might as well use it. So now, when I'm not out using it, it resides here on top of my monitor. Modern MacBook Pros like this one that I use for work actually have really good webcams in my opinion. The audio is pretty good, the video is great, but that doesn't work for me very well because I have two computers, not just my MacBook, but I also have a gaming PC and I can't use my MacBook Pro webcam for my gaming PC. So I needed a camera that worked for both. That's part of the reason why I have a dedicated camera setup. You'll notice that my camera is actually mounted behind my monitor on a pole. It's permanently mounted and I never have to change its position. I never move it up, down, side to side or whatever. I move my monitor. This is really nice because when I'm not using my camera, I can put my monitor up and it actually blocks the camera partially. And the camera more or less is out of my frame of view and I just don't pay attention to it. And then when I want to use the camera, I move my monitor down and I can see the camera perfectly. Another advantage of having my camera mounted this way is it's a little bit lower than it would be if I had mounted it on top of my monitor or if it moved with my monitor. This allows it to be a little bit more in my normal line of sight. In general, I'd say there are two big benefits to using a camera setup like mine over a webcam. The first benefit is that you get a fairly natural blurry background. You don't have to deal with the artificial blurry backgrounds that webcams do. Sometimes, especially if you're wearing headphones like this, the artificial blurriness can look really weird right here where there's gaps in between the band of my headphones and my head. And then the other benefit of having a setup like this is I have a zoom lens on my camera and I can actually change the framing of what you see. So if I want to zoom out, I can actually just with the move of my hand, zoom completely out. For most people, this is overkill. You don't need this. <laughs> Uh, most people probably don't want to show this much on a webcam, but I specifically do. The reason being, every week I have a, a video call with my family, and often my wife or my daughter will join. And it's super helpful to be able to just sit right here and have my wife here or have my daughter on my lap. And everyone in my family can see my wife and my daughter. It's not just a, a headshot of me right here. If If it were like this, it would definitely not be as inviting for everyone that's viewing my video feed. Around my camera, I have a ring light. Part of it is obscured by my monitor, but it still serves its purpose pretty well. This allows me to change lighting on the fly. Uh, I have 
my desk facing a window, which means the sunlight changes throughout the day. Sometimes it's bright, sometimes it's not. And so I'm constantly bumping up and dimming the light depending on what my needs are. And then besides that, I can also change the color temperature of the light so I can make it really warm or I can make it really cool. My PC is mounted underneath my desk. This allows me to keep the PC very close to the desk. So when I raise and lower the desk, it's not changing the cable links that go to the monitors or my keyboard and mouse. And because my computer is right underneath my desk, it allows me to do a better job at cable management and I only have one power cable going from the desk to the wall. And that's about it, that's my setup. I think it's awesome, it's taken me years to refine it and get it to the point where it's at now, but I really, really like where it's at. This setup works incredibly well for me, do you think it would work well for you? What things do you like about it? What things don't you like about it? Uh, what do you have in your setup that you think is better than this? Let me know in the comments below, I'd love to see what your setups are or hear what features you use to make your life easier. Thanks for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye.